Hello, my name is Jeanette Gomez and I'm going to be talking to you today about spelling. Spelling is an encoding process which means that you're saying the sound and then or you're hearing the sound and then you're producing a letter that makes that sound in a written form or an oral form. Today we're going to specifically talk about spelling the k sound and we're going to specific make it even more specific than that. We're going to talk about it being in the initial the beginning part of the word or the medial being in the middle part of the word. And I'm going to use the discovery method to uh, teach this to children. So let me show you how I'm going to do it. And what's really going to guide my discovery method is asking three important questions. And the three important questions I have is what letter do you see that is making the k sound? So we're focusing on C. The second important guiding question is what position, and position referring to initial, the beginning, medial, the middle, final, or the end, is this letter. So it's a very important question right here because where you find or hear the sound dictates what letter it will be. And then the last one, what letter do you see after this letter? What letter comes after the k sound dictates how to spell it. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm going to write some words down. Watch as I write these words. S K I D K E T T S K why? The first question I have is this one. What letter do you see that is making the k sound? Let's listen for the k sound. Repeat these words after me. Skid, kept, sky. So what letter is making the k sound? Correct. It is the k that is making the Sound. The letter K. Let's look at our next question. What position, initial, medial, or final, is this letter? Well, where's letter K? Right here it's in the medial. Here it's in the initial. Here it's in the initial. So that means initial or medial position. I stands for initial, M stands for medial. And what sound is this? It's the k sound. These parentheses represent the shape of my ear, so that's the sound I'm hearing. Let's answer our third question. What letter do you see after this letter K? Well, after the K I see a I. After the K, I see an E. After the K, I see a Y. Okay, so I'm going to put this meaning after I see the I. Squeezes in here. E or Y. Equals. That means in the initial or medial that comes in front of I, E, or Y is spelled with a K. So that's why I use K in words that are found with the letter sound K in the initial meal. It's because the I follows it, the E follows it, and the Y follows it. Just like in skid, kept, and sky. Let's look at some more words. S, C, A, T. C. O. P. C. U. T. C. L. A. S. S. Let's listen for the sound where the spelling of the k sound is in these words. Scat, repeat them after me, cop, k, 
cut class. So the sound we're hearing is k. What letter, first question, do you see that is making the k sound? Correct, it's C. C is making the k sound. Second question, what position, initial, medial, or final, is this letter? Well, let's look. Where is C? Medial. Initial. 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 So C can be in the initial or the medial position. And the sound is producing, parenthesis represents my ears, the shape of my ears, the sound I'm hearing is k. And K represents that sound. Let's look at our third question. What letter do you see after this letter? So what letter do we see after the C? Well, let's look. We see an A. We see an O. We see an U. And we see an L. And L is a consonant. So that means initial medial K. That is right before an A, an O, a U, or some sort of consonant, it could be an L, an R, is spelled with the letter C. So now I've taught the students when to use K and when to use C because they both produce the same sound. Now once I've taught this, I will have a card to remind them of this. and Let me show you the card. And this is a very complicated card, so I wouldn't show them all of this right away. I would just concentrate on this. I would probably cover this up so they couldn't see the rest of this just yet. But this concept card that I review on a daily basis tells me that the k sound in the initial and medial position is spelled K when it's followed by I, E, or Y. It's spelled C when it's followed by A, O, U, or a consonant. Now, once I've told them this, and we've learned this, and we discovered this together, and I'm reviewing this on a daily basis, I need to take this back into their spelling. And the way I do this is usually I start with visual spelling. Let me give you an example of visual spelling. Look at this word. I have a word that's already printed here. Okay? And the word is kiss. So they're visually looking at the word, but the k sound is missing. So they have to decide, is it going to be a K? Or is it going to be a C? And these are our rules here that we just discovered. So visually, let's look. Visually, we have an I. So we look at our anchor chart here. Look at this. I, initial middle K is before I is spelled the K. So we know it's going to be a K. And we put it on this side. Get some tape here. And let me sort it to this side. Okay? Let's look at another word. Let's look at this word. We know the sound is k. We should be spelling cry. But we're doing visual spelling. Let's look. With cry, what do we have here? It's a consonant. R is a consonant. Let's see our rules here. Does it match this one before I, E, or Y? Or is it A, O, U, and a consonant? Well, R is a consonant, so it's going to be a C. So let's put C here. And let me get some tape and tape that up under the C. And sort it that away. So you can use several different words and show students visually how am I going to make the K 
sound. And so they have to look and train their eyes to look after. Oh, I know it's going to be a C for copy. This is K. There's an E. I know it needs to be K because it follows this rule. Now, that's visual spelling. But you always want to take it to auditory spelling. So now they've got to use their listening skills. They've got to be listening. For example, when we spell the word kiss, we're not going to show this for auditory spelling. We're going to say kiss, and they have to train their ears to listen for the sound that comes after the k, which is i in this example, kiss. They're hearing their i sound. So that means it's going to be spelled with a k. Or if you're going to spell kite, they're hearing an i sound. So they know it's going, again, it could be a short sound, i as in kiss, or long sound, i as in kite, but it's still going to be spelled with a k. And then they've got to train their ears the same way on this side. If they're going to spell the word kibble, excuse me, let me use a better word. If they're going to spell the word cling, cling, k, ooh, they hear a constant sound. So no, it has to be with a C. And moving from visual spelling to uh, auditory spelling is a big jump. But if you do a lot of practice with visual, so where they're seeing and they're hearing at the same time, that jump to auditory won't be so big hard because really when you're teaching spelling you want to apply it but sometimes you might want to show the visual before you move into the auditory spelling okay i hope now you understand the rule beh behind spelling the k sound in the initial and medial position it can be the spell the k or c depending on the letter that comes after it because the initial and medial k is spelled i e and y it spells the K. Initial or medial K. That is before A, O, U, or a constant spell C. Okay. Thank you.